Christine the movie is scary because there's this car. It's alive. It's got some sort of soul or spirit inside it, and you can't control it. Christine, this idea that this car is going to run you down was this evil twist and kind of the 60s notion of the Herbie movie. You don't know what it is that's taken over this car, but you know it's not going to be good. Christine is about this little introverted guy named Arnie. One day he finds this classic Plymouth in some junk heap and he buys it and restores it. Very little of Christine, if any, is, is visual effects. I mean, they built 12 cars and the way they shot the car repairing itself was they actually had hydraulics that pulled it in and, and then they shot it all in reverse. The first time that Christine actually takes real action is one of the more blatant scary scenes in the film. Arnie and Lee are out at this drive-in theater, and it's pouring rain. I get out of the car because the windshield wipers stop, and you know, and and you sort of feel something's coming, but you don't know quite what. Oh sh! They put like thousands and thousands of watts of light inside the car. And the whole car was this, this blaze of light in this dark drive-in theater. And it was sort of ghostly and magical and really disturbing. Christine's kind of come to take out the last people who still matter to Arnie so that she can have him for herself. The car wouldn't stop. The car was a the car was a maniac. We've all had a little taste of that sensation that an inanimate object is suddenly you know, torturing us. So all that Stephen King did in, in writing Christine and then John Carpenter did in making the film was, was take that and extend it. And I think that's what makes for a lot of the best scary stuff. It was mind-blowing. I'd never seen veins pop out on somebody's arm before. I'd never seen somebody start bleeding from the eyes and heads explode. David Cronenberg doesn't make straight-out horror films. Every film that he makes is something that you've never seen before. Scanners really fall into that intellectual horror, cerebral film that David Cronenberg just does so well. Scanners is about these telepathic people. They can do it all. They can read your mind. They can hear what you're thinking. They can move things. The idea that these people are out there, these scanners who can read our thoughts, they hear all the things that we would probably like to keep secret. And that can be very disconcerting. You know, you can't talk about that film without talking about Michael Ironside and, and the evil, evil character he plays in this film. And he's come to kind of send a message. The scanners are not a force for good. We have powers that we can use to assert our own sort of dominance and control. And Cameron, his brother, doesn't want to join in this plot to take over. And Daryl just says, fine have it your way, we're going to do it the scanner way, and I'm going to suck your brains dry. ever put on film <laughs> again just i mean when i saw that i just from that day forward i was just addicted to cronenberg stuff i mean that moment 
just grabs you. That's why Cronenberg's movies have been able to live so long, because at the core of all his films, he has something to say, and I think that's the most important thing with a lot of genre films that managed to survive for so long.